name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's going to be something a little bit different. So I'm around my friend's house, Richard, and he's building a PC for his son Hayden and I thought it might be quite nice to film it to see how it goes together. So basically the criteria for this was that it needs to be a gaming PC and also there is a budget involved as well. So the budget originally was £1,300 but like anything that always gets upped a little bit and it's come in at £1,450 but that excludes the monitor back there and also the gaming mouse there but everything else is included in that price. So what we're going to do is, or what they're going to do, is they're going to start putting it together now and I'm going to be the one asking annoying questions because I know nothing about PCs and hopefully if you're watching this maybe you might be similar to myself and then we can all learn a little bit along the way. So let's get started. So this is the motherboard here, it's a Republic of Gamer B450F motherboard and how much did this one cost? This was 125 wasn't it? Yeah, right. This was 125 pounds, so this is the uh, motherboard here, if you just paste yeah. it up here. It's quite important as well for this setup here, for the RGB lighting, so it looks nice as well as performs well. So yeah. if we turn this around at the back here, let's have a quick look at the ports on this. Now already when I looked at this, I've seen ports that I didn't recognise before. So we've got some audio ports there, that's all standard. Ethernet, we've got USB 3, there's some USB 2s here. But look at these ones, the red ones here. And I've never seen them before. We also have HDMI and DisplayPort and a little Type-C as well. Looking up those ones, apparently they're supposed to allow more power through the USB. And also, they're supposed to be when the PC is in like sleep or standby mode, you can still, for example, charge your phones and stuff from them. So already, I've learned something tonight because of that. And I think, did you say it was an ATX motherboard? Yeah, so this is an ATX motherboard. The ATX really depicts the size of the motherboard. This is this is one of the most common size motherboards. You could get a micro ATX, which would be a lot smaller, sort of like this kind of size. And also there's a mini ITX as well, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Which would be a lot smaller again. It's down to the kind of size of case you have. Sure, and your case is this one here, which is mid size, did you say? Yeah, this is a mid tower, this is a Corsair case. It's a Corsair airflow, I believe. Mm. So it allows a lot of airflow through to cool the components, which mm. uh, you need, especially on a gaming PC. Okay, and that comes with a couple of fans, but you have to buy more. Yeah, it comes with three fans by default. Three fans at the front of the case, which will blow the air. We're going to use it to blow the air into the PC. Uh, we want to also have some exhaust fans that will exhaust the uh, air out as well. Right, okay. So we might talk about that a little bit later, but you can have different pressures. So you can have more going in and less going out. Yes. You can have more going out and less going in. Which yeah. So you can have like positive or negative pressure. Positive or negative pressure, absolutely, yes. Uh, but you're going for around about equal or...? I think we're going to try, well, we're going to be slightly positive pressure because we're going to have three fans on the intake and two fans on the uh, exhaust, okay. so outtake. So now what we have to do here is fit the CPU. Do you want Very to tell good. us a little bit about this one here? Yeah, so this we paid, I believe, £284 for, I Thank believe. You. This is an AMD Ryzen processor. AMD is quite a big player in the processor market now. The equivalent would be an Intel. Intel do really good processors as well. We opted for the AMD. I've used AMD processors in the past and you know had very good results with them. So we've and my son Hayden chose this processor, I think because a lot of his friends have this and it's a powerful for what he needs needs it to use it for. Excellent. So we're gonna uh, well you're gonna try and fit this now. Absolutely. So uh, Richard hasn't actually made a computer, what was it, and put together a computer about seven years? About seven years, so yeah. hardware's moved on quite a lot from where I was. So things like the M.2 SSD, uh, SSD drives, I haven't really had too much exposure to them, so that's why it's going to make it interesting, so you know, I'll be learning along the way as well. Okay, so now we're going to be putting the CPU on here, and luckily on the motherboard here it's socketed, which I presume is probably normal on motherboards, but it's nice to see that, especially when you're dealing with things like game consoles where everything has got a BGA chip on it. It's nice to see this, which is easy to remove and uh, you know replace. So Hayden's just going to install this now. now. How do you know which way the chip is going to go on here? Well, actually, if you look at the board, there is a small like indented arrow okay. in the... Well, this that little corner the there. Board. Yeah. And you would want to line that up with the golden arrow on the CPU, on the PCB of the CPU. Oh, I see. It's tiny. Right, okay. Let's just put that for the camera. So there's a tiny little arrow.
just in that little corner there. So that's got to marry up with this bit here. And look, they were just showing me how nice is this. Look, there's a little there. Uh, I'll let you do it, Hayden. Okay. There's a little lever here. And if you look at the uh, mechanism, the whole thing like moves up like this and then down like that. So if you look, you can see there. So you mount it on there, and then when you clip it down, it pushes it into place. So it's a nice little action. And if you have a look at the underneath of the CPU, can you see there's hundreds of just little pins, tiny little pins sticking up? And that's what goes into the socket down here. So. Nicely done. So the CPU is sat in there nicely now. So now it's time to put the RAM in. So what have you got here? I've got the Corsair version, it's RGB Pro. A dual pair of eight gigabytes. Eight gigabytes each. And these, these light up here, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Corsair RAM, it's good, really fast RAM. Made by a good company, so it'd be good for a gaming machine. Now, as far as installing them go, is it in these, these slots here? Yeah. Right. So for the most performance, you would want to go into the second and fourth slot. Okay, and how do you know which is number one and which is number four? Uh, there are normally there are indicators here. So oh, I see. In slot one, two, three, and four. Oh, okay, so it says B1. A, A, A1, A1, A2, B1, B2. Yeah. So what what's the best to put it on A2 and B2? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So what you do first is you would undo these two levers here. On older motherboards, they may have levers on the other side of the slot. Okay. Which you would do as well. But this is a newer type of motherboard, so it would have one lever. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it until I hear a click. Like that. Nice. That click. Oh, and it pulls the lever up automatically. You don't have to pull the lever up? Yeah, you automatically pulls it down. And also they're slightly off-centered, aren't they? That little mm. sort of tooth missing in the middle is off-centered, so you can't put it in the wrong way? Yeah. Gone in nicely. And these two sticks of RAM were £90 for both of them. Now it's time to put in the SSD. Now these ones here are an NVMe M2 solid state drive. And if you have a look at the motherboard here, we have two slots. One's here and one's here. Now they already had one of these left over. So they're just going to be putting that in here just as an extra because it's left over anyway. But on this particular project, this is the one that they bought here. And this is a one terabyte, so a thousand gigabytes. And the reason they're using this rather than this, well, they will also be using a mechanical disk drive as well, is because these are actually much cheaper for the amount of storage you get on them. So these are quite expensive. But this one here, I thought, seemed quite reasonable. So this was, was this £100? It was 100 yeah. Yeah, £100 yeah. seems pretty good. And why would you use one of these over here? The smaller, but as well as that, it's the much quicker. Yeah, extremely fast. So it's sitting straight on the motherboard, so it's got direct access to the resources of the motherboard. You know, with these, you can get these easy with, um, you know, SATA, SATA connections as well, which are, which come off the motherboard here, um, which will be connecting the mechanical, which has a serial ATA connection. So the um, SSDs with the, the, the SATA connections, they look more similar to this rather than one of these? They'll, they'll look smaller. They'll be, this is a three and a half inch drive. It'll be, it'll be a two and a half inch drive for a serial ATA SSD. Right. You know, so the reason why you want to buy and want to have one of these is because your the price per gigabyte in storage is going to be a lot cheaper than using something like this. So all your music, your videos and that kind of thing you'll store on here. Your operating system you're going to put on here, which is going to give you extremely fast boot times into into Windows. Um, also, if you're a gamer and you might want to store your games that you play regularly on here, because they're going to be lightning fast to loading up. Sure. So you could just access the information much quicker on here than here. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now to install it in here, it's going to go in this one here, and there's three little holes here. There's little standoffs that go in here depending on the size of it. So I think our one's going to be is it the largest one here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's install that now.
So it's time to put the motherboard now into the case here. So this case was £90. The power supply has already been put into it. So that was bought obviously separately. And this is the power supply here. Again, Corsair RM550X. So that's 550 watt. Now, how did you know that you needed 550 watts? So we spec'd up the PC on a website called PC Parts Picker, where you can choose parts, you, components that you're going to put into, into a PC. And then down the bottom or at the top of something it says how many watts you need to power all the components that you've chosen. I think this one came out at 380 watts. So we opted just so you've got a bit of extra space if you want to put some additional bits of hardware in there, additional hard disks or something. Sure, so you've future-proofed it a bit. Yeah, so you've got a bit of headroom there, so you yeah. can expand it a little bit and not having to upgrade the power supply. Okay, and that was easy to install. It was just, uh, it's already in here now, but it was uh, it's just a case of sliding in just, just a few screws. Yeah, absolutely, just put it in there and then you route uh, your cables around to where you need them to go. If you look closely at this case here, it actually has what it can fit here. Can you see there, ATX, Micro ATX and ITX. So the case now is just on its side, on the other side, and you can see now the power supply's here. So a couple more cables just need to be installed into the back of the power supply here. Remember, this is the thing that's gonna now provide power to the rest of the PC. This is the drive bay here. This is where the mechanical drive is gonna be going into, and then this slots into here. And the motherboard is going to be getting placed into the case. The ports or the I.O. shield goes towards the back of the case here. And now the motherboard is just going to get screwed down. So it's time now to plug in the cables into the motherboard. Alright, so this is a 24 pin power supply uh, connection, so that's going to plug into here. Over here we've got an 8 pin power connection. It's, I think this this one's generally for the CPU. Um, so we're going to plug these ones in and then there's various there's a USB 3 uh, cable there that needs to be plugged into this connection here. And that uh, allows the USB ports on the top of the case to be used. And then there's various other ones that we need to plug into the motherboard header here. We look, need to look at the, ma the manual to find out exactly which pins they need to go into. And there are things like the hard disk drive lights on the case, power switch, reset button. Uh, they need to go into this header here, but we need to know the configuration for it. And these ones here? That's, uh, they're the uh, power supplies for the GPU, for the graphic, graphics card. So when the graphics card is mounted into this slot here, that's going to plug into the GPU to provide power to the GPU. Okay, and these two have like a metal surround on them and this one doesn't. Yeah, so they're all PCI Express slots. Um, this, apparently this is reinforcement because when the PC is standing up at the side, the, uh, the graphics cards can sag and put some you know, strain on these connections which are on the main board, so. Right, okay, so it's, uh, the graphics card is, is it screwed into this part here? It this is, side. Yeah. So it's attached there, it's attached here, but I suppose the weight from here does sag down because yeah, it's not so attached find, on this side. You find they sag down the other yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, because I think on my PC, it's got like a plastic clip that then goes against the bottom here. Mm. So it's like, uh, so it gets support from there as well. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe they're not reinforced. Right, okay, yeah. let's plug them in. Okay, cool. This is the other side of the case here and already you can see it's just a big mass of cables but they can be neatened up afterwards because it's kind of hard to do cable management when you're not 100% sure of where those cables are going to go. So there's access holes up the top here and also down the bottom here so then they can be neatened up at the end. Right, so it's starting to come together now, there's still some cables to plug in. You can see some uh, USB cables being put in there, also an audio cable over there. But it's these little pins down here. But if you look really closely underneath, you can see that it is, they are actually labelled up just underneath there. It's very hard to see. And if you look at these as well, these are labelled up as well. 
And just to point out, Vince, a lot of these cables here, the top panel connector on top of the case, where you've got your power switch, USB connections, if you have a look up there. Yeah. You know, and your audio for your headphones, your reset switch. All those cables basically go to the motherboard. Sure. So they're all routed via down here, the SEA cables, into this bit here. Yeah. In the motherboard manual here, it has the diagram here for what goes where. switch on. Okay, what else have we got? So they're all in their place now. So now the fans have been installed, so there's three at the front, so they're the intakes and then these are the exhausts going out. So there's going to be one here and this one is going to be going up here. And if you look, you see these are the mounting holes, so you've got a choice to put them here, here and here. And uh, these ones here are, what size are these ones? These are 120 millimeters. 120 and these are 140 millimeters. Okay, and these fans here are 120. So on these now, how do you know which way to put them around? Because you want these to be the exhaust blowing out. So usually how you would tell is you would look for the bars at the back of the fan. Okay. And these would usually indicate if the fan is pushing this way, or if you look around, say there's one side of the fan maybe around to see oh, it'll push that oh. way. Excellent, so you've got little arrows. Right, okay. Now it's time to install the fan. So the CPU did actually come with a fan, a nice looking fan, but you guys have opted for something a bit more fancy, which is this one, which is all water cooled. So now, so with this one, it's just a standard fan. Yes, so it's a standard fan and a heat sink. Uh, this will be, this will cool the CPU, but what we've opted for is a lot better. So. There is, you've got this block that sits on top of the CPU and it's got a pump built into it and it, it pumps fluid up to the radiator and the radiator has some fans mounted onto it. So the fluid passes through the radiators, or through the radiator, the fans cool the liquid in there and send it back down to the, the CPU. So it's working very similar to a car but the, the airflow isn't rushing through it from driving the car, the fans are dragging the, fans the air are through doing it. Job. Yeah. So this is called, uh, we call this an all-in-one, um, and it's kind of liquid cooling with the radiator. You know, you could go further than this and have a full liquid cooled system where the GPU and everything would be cooled with the liquid, but we've opted for this and the GPU is going to be cooled with a standard fan. And this is all sealed already, you don't have to add any liquid to it, it's all you built can't. in. You can't, all built in, you can't undo it. So you if, if you wanted to change that at a later stage, you'd have to change this unit or probably the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And also this lights up nice and fancy with the RGB lighting. It does, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Excellent, right, let's, uh, yeah. let's we'll get, get it mounted. There. So it's not screwed in yet, but this is where it's gonna sit here and the fans are gonna push the air through it and then we have this on top of the actual CPU itself. And this radiator here was 100 pound in total. Now it's thermal paste time. Now with this one here, there is no thermal place already applied to this, but if you have a look at the other fan that we're not using, can you see they've put nice little bits of thermal paste all over that. So now it's gonna be uh, time to put it on. We've just been discussing, like you do, how much thermal paste to put on and the best way to apply it. So what we're gonna do is put it absolutely everywhere just to get the comments going. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're gonna put a little blob and then use a spatula to spread it out and then a very thin layer should hopefully be okay. It's a thermal paste on here now and it's been spread out but not along the very edge here. So hopefully now when the block goes on it and it gets screwed down, that should all move across there because the thermal paste is only to take out any tiny little imperfections between the surface of here and the block itself. Just screwing down either side to try and apply even pressure. There's two cables coming out of it. This one here is going to be for power, and this one here is going to be for the RGB lighting. The other cable just got plugged in to this unit here. So this is the RGB connections, 
and this one is the RGB connections for the Corsair fans because they're a slightly different connector than these ones here and this connector here is for the power for the fans. So now we come to this beast here so this is the graphics card here and it is uh, 2070 Super Correct. Yeah. So you want to tell me how, well, how much was this to be with? This was very close to five hundred pounds. Uh, just not much change out of five hundred for that. So about a third of the whole budget has gone on the graphics card. Yeah. So it's a gaming machine. So we need a good graphical graphical processing unit, sure. GPU. Um, so yeah. So we've gone spent a third of the budget on this. But, uh, it is very. I would say high end. There are. The 2080 is a bit more powerful, um, but more expensive. But more expensive. So yeah. this is kind of a sensible buy because it's you're not paying stupid amounts more for stupid amounts more money for um, just very little kind of performance extra. Yeah. Okay. Kind of thing. So should we unpack it then? See what it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So here it is here with the three fans, and we've got various ports down the side here. So we've got three Display Ports and one HDMI port as well. So the ports on here are this one here, which is PCI Express, which is going to go in the motherboard slot there. And if we spin it around, we've got the power connections just down here. And also another port with a little sort of a dust cover cap thing on it. That's for actually linking up another graphics card if you wanted to pair up two of them. So it's in there now, it was a very close fit to the radiator here, but it fits nice and snugly across there. So it's locked in. That is it now put together and if you look at it from this side it looks lovely. So the other side needs a little bit of cable management to make it nice and neat but that's going to be covered over with the case anyway. But inside here looks really nice. So it's going to get connected up to the monitor now just to see if it posts. So the power's been put on at the back, and there's definitely some life happening there. The moment of truth. Here we go. Absolutely. Check out that lighting. Well, we need to turn the monitor. That's me. Oh, here we go. Well, so it looks like it's definitely connected up okay. So now what needs to be done is the rest of the case covers need to be put on and then Windows 10 needs to be loaded up onto it. But it's looking really, really nice. Dust filter. Slots on nice, so that's magnetic. Can I have a little go at that? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's a really nice case, isn't it? Yeah. That is looking good. Should we put the glass on the side? Yeah. Then should we do the satisfying peel off? Yeah, go on. It's going to get stuck behind the screws now, isn't it? I know, but... Still looks satisfying.
just going to be loading up Windows 10 onto it now. So Windows is installed, but there's loads of updates to go through. You can see it's only 6% way through at the moment. Once they've all gone through, then, then the right drivers are there, the resolution will pick up. But the time now in the UK is nearly 3 in the morning, so I'm going to call it a day. Big thanks to Richard and Hayden for letting me film this. I think it's been interesting. Hopefully now I can edit the video down and uh, make it watchable. But I really enjoyed putting that together. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. Take care. Bye now. Bye. We've got it all set up here in our vents and the desk. Looking pretty cool. So just going to give you a quick demo.